right, without any further ado, we're going to talk about a couple of things. One, uh, Rick Perry. We'll start there because uh, our next guest is uh, a Rick Perry for President supporter and uh, heading up his uh, grassroots efforts in North Dakota. And then we'll talk a little bit about the political landscape of uh, North Dakota. The Democrats finally scrounged up a, a candidate on Friday in a big vacuum there, but Pam Gullison stepped up to the plate to uh, announce her candidacy for the U.S. House. We'll talk about that, too, and also a new poll. The Democrats have been shopping for a month. It's a, it's a month old, and they finally got some traction on it nationally, uh, suggesting that um, Rick Berg has a battle for uh, election to the United States Senate. A comment on these and other topics. Welcome to the program, the former chairman of the Republican Party in North Dakota. Longtime successful North Dakota businessman and also now a member of the organizing committee of the North Dakota Tea Party Caucus, Gary Emmett. Hello, Gary. Welcome back. How are you? You there, Gary? Yeah, good morning. How are you? Are you there, Scott? I'm good, chairman of the Common Sense Club. I appreciate you keeping that message going there, buddy. We're hard at her today, kicking off a brand new week. And uh, Rick Perry is uh, toast compared to a lot of the folks in the punditry over a tough debate performance last week down in Florida and uh, a uh, trouncing of him and Mitt Romney by uh, Herman Cain in the Florida straw poll over the weekend. What's your take? Well, um, Rick, um, you know, took off out of the gates with like a rocket, of course. People were, I think people have been struggling with who their candidates are going to be. They haven't been that happy with Mitt and and a lot of the other candidates haven't had a national exposure. And so, you know, I think to a really high expectation with Rick Perry, and without question, he's been flat in the debates. And um, I think that no question hurt him the last debate. I was watching him, and I was thinking he had a couple of nice fastballs down the middle that he could have nailed men on, and he didn't do it. And so, you know, um, Republicans are looking for someone um, desperately because we're just scared to death of another four years of Barack Obama. And so, um, you know, there were expectations behind Rick. I think he um, he um, took a couple of strikes he didn't need to take, and unfortunately, that's hurting him in the numbers. But I think it's still really early. Um, you know, um, he's going to have to recover because if he doesn't step up and um, do what he needs to do, um, his campaign is going to have some major challenges ahead of it. But but I think um, Rick's a strong candidate. He's a hard worker. I think he's going to get it right, and he'll be back in the hunt pretty aggressively because he's still in the top tier, obviously driving the thing. You know, again, this so. I think, um, you know, he's got plenty of time to recover. So uh, this idea, and uh, most of this is coming from, the, you know, sort of the talking heads and kind of the conservative chattering class, if you will. Uh, but a lot of people just have, you know, they have him written off as a result of this. I mean, uh, you know, that he's in meltdown mode and his candidacy might not be able to survive this. You think that's over the top? It's way over the top. Well, first of all, Scott, one of the things that made Rick Perry appeal to the Tea Party caucus, his whole campaign team is out of Texas. And they're not um, Washington inside the Beltway kind of guys, and they're not happy because if Rick becomes the president, um, it's not going to be business as usual in Washington. And so consequently, all inside the Beltway, and, you know, I know you're a good friend of Carl Rove, and I'm not a big – I like Carl. He's a smart guy, but I get tired of listening to him. He's just one of the talking heads on the radio, and, and they're not um, Perry guys. And so those guys that want their candidate to be the person – I got to do what they can to destroy Rick because if Rick would have hit one out of the park, the race for president um, on the Republican side might have been, um, you know, approaching 15 point lead, and that would have been really tough for anybody to recover. So every candidate's been beating him up, and rightly so because they got to knock him off his pedestal. So it's, he's taken some hits, and he hasn't responded as quick as he has. But you know, he's got some Reagan esque moments, and I think he's got as strong as appeal as anybody. It's just that his campaign's got to kind of rally around here once and. And, you know, he's got a good team around him, and I think Rick's going to come out swinging hard. I've watched him kind of what I've seen over the weekend. He's not backing down. He's staying strong, and he's going to stay on message, and I think he's going to be, he's going to be back in the hunt pretty aggressively. Why, uh, you know, I get, you know, look, it's competitive, and you want to put your best foot forward, and you have to do everything to maximize, uh, you know, advantages that uh, other campaigns provide, and this is certainly a window for others. But it seems to me this uh, – you know, I don't know. More more so than ever, we ought to be practicing the Reagan 11th Commandment, given the fact that we are all united in, in needing to stop uh, the destruction of uh, everything we stand for in this country from a second Obama term. I mean, does it surprise you that there's uh, this much uh, underhandedness uh, anti-Perry from the Republican establishment? Well, you know, I think what's happened, Scott, is 
Republicans now all of a sudden, and I would say in the last month, have already gotten their mind around that Barack Obama's toast. You know, you're seeing all these rumblings from the Democrat side that about Hillary Clinton. And it's almost like they're trying to come up and give a window so Hillary can show up as the savior and Barack Obama bonds out of it. And, I mean, that's kind of an outside shot, but when you kind of see what's going on in the last week, the drums beating for Hillary. So I think what's happening is all the Republicans say, man, if I get the nomination, I got a, I got a shot of being the next president. So consequently, Republicans see this window that if they can get the nomination, they're doing it. So, And that's just early politics and what I don't like is when they get really nasty on each other, and if you, if you think about some of the implications of the attacks on each other are going to be used in Democrat ads in the fall of next year, that's what I don't like, and it's beginning to happen. From, you know, it's from the Romney campaign, you're seeing it from Bachman, you're, and you're seeing a little bit of it from Perry and these guys. But if, if, they, if they get these personal attacks going and stuff, that's, that's that's the problem I have. You know, we got to get the issues out. And at the end of the day, they can't be confused that our opponent is Barack Obama or Hillary. And that's really the challenge we have to deal with. The next big test is going to be the fundraising uh, reporting. And uh, any any rumors or buzz you're picking up on how Perry's doing on that front? Because if he, in fact, uh, you know, equals or bests uh, Mitt Romney, that'll be a huge wind at his back, won't it? Yeah, he had a lot of momentum point raising money, and Rick Perry's a known guy that can raise money. He's raised a hundred some million dollars out in Texas for his campaign, and I think um, it's, it's about the money to be able to be competitive because you know you can talk about Iowa, New Hampshire, a few of those straw polls, and the, what's going on in Florida and what happened in Michigan this weekend. But you know these guys have to pick their races. Um, as far as where they're going to show the momentum, it's like even in North Dakota, the Perry campaign, they're not spending any time thinking about a North Dakota or even South Dakota. They're, they're not really announcing their campaigns. They've got to focus on those early primary states, because you recall in 2008, you know, when, um, for instance, um, um, uh, Rick Giuliani took a lot of passes and put everything in one state. Well, he was over in one day. Boom. With Florida and the hip, it was all over because he didn't pull it. So that's the challenge of the way these campaigns are run that I think is a problem. They get all right, hang, hang on, hold that thought. We'll come back and continue this on the other side of the break. Also, want your take on uh, the North Dakota races as well. Gary Amoth, North Dakota Tea Party Caucus Executive uh, Committee participant. We'll continue after this. Don't go away. I'm back on the Common Sense Club and the Scott Hannon Show. Uh, Gary Amoth, former North Dakota Party Chairman for the Republican Party in the North Dakota, member of the Tea Party Caucus. We're talking a little bit about Rick Perry because he's uh, part of the. Uh, Perry team in North Dakota as well, and also I uh, want to shift to some North Dakota news here in a moment. First of all, on the uh, presidential race, um, Mitt Romney and Rick Perry, by a lot of accounts in Florida, might have put a little dent in that. Have been viewed as a, you know this is a two person race now. Do you think it's a two person between those two, or do you think one of these other uh, candidates, a Michelle Bachman, a Hermit Cain, a Rick Santorum, a Newt Gingrich, can still emerge as the nominee? I think um, I think an interesting dark horse is Newt because Newt performs so well in the debates and he has such great vision. If Newt didn't have his personal life so messed up and his, his stuff, I think he'd be much more formidable. I don't know if his, if he really gets enough traction. His campaign seems to be really struggling. But Rick Santorum, I tell you, I've consistently heard from people that they've been very impressed with his articulation on the issues. And with Michelle Bachman struggling, it sure looks like to me that Rick's, Rick's the dark horse, unless someone else gets in. And I still think there's really plenty of time to get in. Um, you know, it's hard to say what Sarah Palin does, but or Chris Christie, there's still some talk. I still think there's still unrest in Republicans out there. Nobody's really rose. We have so much hope um, around what Rick was going to do. And I think Rick Perry struggled, so now all of a sudden we're back now. Is there somebody else going to get in the race? You know, But without question, those are the two guys. And the question is, are they going to have enough money? Is it going to look strong for them? And that's kind of how we ended before we went to the break, is the money that Perry will probably have and um, Romney. If they have a lot of money that they've raised, that carries forward into them keeping a huge momentum and becoming a two-person two race, I think. And I think that's going to be true in North Dakota as well. Why are uh, conservatives, Republicans, uh, you know, pining for more? Oh, Chris Christie, is he going to get in? Sarah Palin going to get You know, it's almost like uh, we want Rick Perry get in now. Uh, you know, that's kind of worn off. I mean, do you, do you think we're a little ADD here? I think we're acting that way. But, you know, it's early and people are just starting to pay attention, you know, and so I think the numbers are low enough with all of the other candidates. A lot of these national polls don't mean much. But, you know, it, it's like how much impact do these straw polls have in Iowa 
and uh, Michigan and Florida, and they're all trying to get some attention. It becomes almost a tourism or an economic development program for some of these states. But I think our, our nominating process has gotten kind of squirrely the way we've approached it. And so, you know, we, we put so much attention on some of these early states, and I think that's just that's wrong in the process. I think it's need to be rethought about. But, but it's going to take money to compete when you have these Super Tuesdays with all these races occurring, on, on, you know, in states and on, on one day that are going to be happening come March. And it's, it takes a lot of money to compete, and that'll be the question is what happens with the money in the bank accounts of the Romney and Perry campaign to set the stage. Because we know Barack Obama is going to have a ton of it. Gary Amanath uh, with us, uh, and uh, we're talking a little bit about uh, a couple of things in the news on the national uh, GOP front. Let's talk a little bit about North Dakota. Finally, a Democratic candidate has emerged, Pam Gullison, uh, although she puts her hat in for the House race versus the Senate race. What's the significance of that, do you believe? Well, I think the Democrats believe they got a shot at it. You know, there was a poll that came out that you mentioned um, earlier on, in the show about that Democrat pollster group that uh, basically said that it's a 44 Berg 40. Uh, percent of people looking for another candidate. Well, I just, you know, as you and I both know, depending on how you ask the question, you can make Berg look weak and, and make the Democrats look okay. I don't find that much unrest here in North Dakota where people are pining away for some Democrat candidate. So those poll numbers of 44-40, I'm very suspect of related to Berg. Um, you know, Rick's, Rick's raised, I think he's raised about a half a million dollars. I, I guess his reporting will be coming out before too long. Um, you got Dwayne Sand in the race making a little bit competitive. Um, as far as out there working the streets, and we'll see how much money he's raised. But I think the House race is the one that the Democrats think they got a shot at, and that's why Pam's at it. You know, she's worked. So obviously she was with Dorgan for a while. And the question will be is, does Byron Dorgan, Ken Conrad, or Earl Pomeroy, do they step up and help someone and help raise some money? Because if Pam raises half a million dollars, and um, she won't be competitive in the House race because of the money it's going to take to do it. Rob Poor, the Sanding Blog here. A few questions for Gary, too. Go ahead, Rob. It, it seemed to me a little odd, the timing on releasing that poll about Rick Berg. Was the reason why they released it to, to distract from the fact that, that Gullison, who had been expected to run for the Senate, uh, was opting not to challenge Rick Berg, but instead run for the open house seat? You know, I, I'm not sure it was that strategic, um, Rob. I, I just think that they... They wanted to show that Republicans are vulnerable. My guess is they wanted to show Republicans are vulnerable in the state. And if the Democrats don't put together a solid slate of candidates and they don't raise much money, they got problems because they have lived for years on the Washington money or out of state money. The Democrat state party raised two to three million dollars and 90 percent came out of state. When you don't have a senator and congressman pushing money back to the Democrat party and they got to rely on their local money. They don't have the infrastructure. So I think they're just trying to say the party's got more support across the state. Um, it'll just be, I think we're going to have to wait and see what their candidates step up looking like um, as far as being able to raise money. Are there people that have some name ID and are going to be shown competitive? And, and I think they got a long road ahead of them this election cycle because this is an anti-Obama election in North Dakota, and being a Republican is going to be a huge advantage. You know, here what's weird, that, that, what's weird to me about the poll that Rob mentions is that, you know, if, and by the way, it was a month old, so, uh, you know, it, 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 you know. but to put that out suggesting Berg's vulnerable when you have a candidate who's been the only candidate really of note mentioned for any of the, the major races statewide opting out of the Senate race, but rather for the House race, sort of is a contradiction, isn't it? Well, I think the other thing that this um, Jeff Guerin made comment about the poll, he was taking attack at Berg and said his personal performance ratings are lowest by far I've ever measured for any federally elected official in the state. Well, you know, granted, Rick was only there a half a year, so you can't take one election cycle where Rick wasn't a statewide candidate before. He was there just a short time, and, of course, that's a criticism for him running for the Senate. But but you know what? Rick was a, um, a legislator for a long time. He's, he's got a lot of experience, and for the opportunity to come for that Senate seat for Republicans, you know, for Rick to step forward, why not? You know, so the attack of him with that being an issue, he hasn't been there long enough to have a long enough record, and that makes him even a stronger candidate in my mind. Rob, go ahead. Last question for Gary. Yeah, Gary, I was I was also going to uh, to, to ask, do you think... Uh... Do you think... Uh, what, Rob? We, we lose Rob? We lost you, Rob. Not sure. Gary, you still there? I'm here. I'm here. I don't know. We we lost our connection to Rob there. 
I'm in suspense as to what he was going to ask now for crying out loud. Um. <laughs> if, if he comes back, here's what I would say. It's still plenty early. You know, a lot of times politics really doesn't get going till Labor Day of the election year. Obviously, presidential politics are different. But if you keep in mind in December, 